Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So one of the things I do um, in my role at Bright Line Eating is I watch what's happening in the network and, um, you know, the people in our community and collect data, both formal and informal, on what's happening among us and feel the pulse. And what I notice is that these times are very unusual. I'm sure that's not news to you. Um, and the network is absorbing more than it normally has to absorb. There are more rocks getting thrown in the pond and the ripples overlap with the ripples. And I wanna to talk today about a phenomenon called co-regulation. You may have heard of self-regulation, right? Self-regulation is um, taking steps to soothe our autonomic nervous system, right? There's the sympathetic nervous system that has the fight or flight, freeze, reaction. And then there's the parasympathetic nervous system that has the calm, restore, um, heal, rejuvenate, digest, rest system. And self-regulation is a means of bringing the nervous system back to a state of peace or equilibrium. And co-regulation is doing that with each other. It's basically making use of other people's calm on borrow, right? Like you can, you can sort of reach out and take advantage of the fact that we're not all distressed in the same moment. And this is an incredibly important skill to have, reaching out for help. Not developing this skill has consequences. And in a time like this, those consequences become more pronounced. CNN and plenty of other mainstream news outlets reported recently that in one month, there were more suicides in Japan than Japan had sustained deaths of COVID since the beginning of the COVID pandemic. In other words, months and months and months and months and months and months of COVID deaths in one month, they amassed more suicides than that. A few weeks ago, um, a friend of mine who is an esteemed psychologist and psychotherapist told me that one of her dear friends and colleagues who is a psychotherapist had committed suicide. And two, three weeks later, a member of my family committed suicide, um, a very close member of my family in his 70s, um, closer than a cousin, a, a direct member of my immediate family. And he did not reach out for help before he did it. Um, I didn't know he was in distress. None of us did until it was too late. And... The thing about co-regulation is that the benefits of using or taking advantage of other people's calmness, reassurance, support um, are immediate and they are profound. Uh, it's absolutely one of the most effective immediate ways uh, to bring our system back into balance. On the flip side, the more all of us are experiencing distress, uh, the more that's going to impact the entire network, right? And that's what we're seeing. What we're seeing is that uh, the entire network of humanity, um, sort of through these pockets of associations that we all have with each other, um, the entire network is being stressed. And for those of us who experience stress coming out often sideways in our food, we get into loops where 
stress in the system or stress internally uh, can lead to eating, which uh, ramps up negative thinking because sugar is a depressant and has a profound impact on uh, the tone and tenor of our thinking. Uh, negative thinking uh, has a huge spike in the two to three days after we eat a bunch of sugar. Um, decreasing amounts of vegetable consumption, uh, that has immediate impact as well. So um, mood is directly correlated with consumption of vegetables in the next day. So uh, teenagers, a research study um, from Europe showed that teenagers who eat a lot of vegetables today are really happy tomorrow. Uh, but conversely, it's a, it's a strong correlation and conversely, really low levels of vegetable consumption are also associated with um, really dark moods. So for those of us who experience our distress coming out in our eating, we then get into a loop where, uh, our negative moods get compounded, right? And then there's something called um, mood-dependent memory or state-dependent memory where in the state of a dark mood, we are only able to, or preferentially able to remember all the other times that we've been in a dark mood. It's as if, um, the color of our memory or the availability of our memory uh, becomes selectively attuned to whatever mood state we're in right then. That can have some devastating consequences. It can make one feel like, I've always felt this way. This is just who I am. This is how the world is for me. This is how it looks. And all of the really happy, joyful times are not available as memories in that moment again, compounding the darkness. You know, we're here in a pronounced month where things are quite different. You know, for a lot of us, a lot of folks are um, facing more lockdowns or less availability. I was just talking with a girlfriend. I was in the grocery store this morning and we were on the phone and she was just saying uh, how many people in her close network were basically not available right now to spend time with her face to face, maybe social distanced walks um, outside. Um, but that was it. And she was feeling the, um, the stress and the loneliness and the anxiety brought on by um, having fewer friends available. All of this is in the mix in Bright Line Eating when we guide people, teach people to have networks of real connection, real connection, and some of them online and on the telephone. And it's so funny because we did this before COVID, right? Like we absolutely taught people to have, you know, weekly telephone calls with a mastermind group, daily reach outs with a buddy, um, close networks of people in um, group support groups from their boot camp, from Bright Lifers, the Bright Line Eating official group, all these groups where people get to know each other and um, practice loving and being loved, especially the smaller groups in Bright Line Eating, they get to be incredibly close. And boy, it's seeming uh, fortuitous, I gotta say, that for me at least, so much of my support is accessible still. So much of my support is accessible still because so much of it is online and on the telephone. And I make really good use of current technology to reach out and get support. And I get support on my good days um, so that I already have the habit built up for when it's bleak. But, you know, I got to say, I, I suffered from a bout of clinical depression last winter, my first in 17 years. And um, I really relate to how hard it is to reach out for support when um, those darkest of dark states hit. Co-regulation is, um, it's, a, it's a fascinating phenomenon. Um, when people are attuned to each other and connected, what we see is um, we see their heart rates sync up we see their brain patterns start to sync up. Um, a professor at Yale University put people in fMRI machines and as they connected, 
Um, this was through auditory connection, obviously, because they were both in their own fMRI machines. Um, their brainwave patterns started to mirror each other in this dance um, where you could literally see how one person was starting to predict what the next person was going to say, almost finishing their sentences for them um, in their brainwave patterns. It was a beautiful dance that he witnessed. Um, you see people's gestures start to line up when they're physically together and they're talking intimately. You can see their gestures start to mirror each other. Um, and the autonomic nervous system receives tremendous benefits from our interpersonal interactions with other people. It's called co-regulation and it is one of the best tools I know of for maintaining protection against the kind of profound and seemingly absolute isolation, loneliness, and desperation that can creep into the mind and the heart and the soul and convince us that it's permanent, even when it's really not, as all of those positive memories are just shielded from our uh, access for that brief time. I love you, and I encourage you to reach out for help and support when it feels hard. I hope you will. I hope you will. And the main things that I'm doing as I notice myself that these days on average are so much harder, you know, than the average of my memory of other days, right? Uh, during other spans of time. What I'm doing is um, I'm pretty radical in taking it one day at a time. It's actually one of the gifts, I guess, of this kind of uncertainty um, and this kind of difficulty is uh, one day at a time kind of feels like a saving grace. Like, well, I will just take it for this one moment in this one day. And I'm breathing so much more gentleness and permission and grace and acceptance into each moment so much more permission to be human, permission to let it just be what it is, messy, hard, all of it. My lines are bright and I invite you to partake of the joy of a bright meal. Even if you're in a sea of excess sugar and flour right now, one bright meal can be an oasis. It really, really feels good to the body to provide that bedrock of basic good nourishment. And your moods will reflect um, those vegetables that you ate at that meal. <sighs> I am here watching the ripples in our collective lake and body of water together. Noticing that it's extra hard for some of us right now. And doing everything I can in my thoughts and prayers to send you love. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.